Well, let's check in with Kim Kahi Forrest, founder and chief investment officer at Boca Capital Partners, for her take on what's happening on the markets these days. Uh, Kim, thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. So, uh, you know, it's been an interesting week or well, rather an interesting start to the year because it seems like things change so quickly on a dime, really, just depending on the piece of data or the Fed speak that we get. How are you making sense of things right now? Well, I think really going from December, which was pretty horrible, right? Yep. I don't. Yeah, into January, the thing that you may miss is that a lot of that was driven by tax loss sales. And what people are doing is realizing losses during that tax year and then waiting 31 days and maybe buying something back, right? Hmm. So I think that had a lot to do with that quick dip down in December and a quick dip up. But I do think that everything, and I mean every last thing in the stock market now revolves around what is the terminal value of the Fed's raises? Where's it gonna stop, Yeah. right? And anytime we get a, a piece of data that pushes that number higher, the market goes down and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So this is the world we live in. So that's just the way it is, Kim. I mean, I guess until until we uh, until we get there to whatever that terminal rate is. Yep. And then you know what we're going to ask? How long? We're right. going to be like kids in the car. How long till we you know get to the next stop, yeah. which is the decline? So it, it's a tough time to be an investor, but not really. Look for uh, further than you usually do, yeah. and I think that will comfort you. So um, from where we are now, Kim, how much further do you think the, the Fed has to go or or even, you know, how long will it take to get there? Because we did get those comments from Raphael Bostic yesterday about seeing the potential to pause in the summertime. I sure. sort of thought that that was what it seemed like the market was pricing in ahead of that. But um, do you think that that kind of just solidifies or maybe underscores that 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 is a real possibility? Yeah, and and I think we are seeing slowing now, mm. right? And anybody that has taken maybe a con economics 102, maybe mm -hmm. not 101, but 102, knows that the Fed's interest rates don't have all that much to do with the stuff that doesn't have leverage behind it, right? Because the Fed's a bank, they deal with other banks, anything having to do with lending, they can pretty much stop on a dime. And they've done that in the US with things like home buying and commercial real estate, that's way down from where it was. So it just takes more time to work through the system. And I think everybody here is really afraid that by ramping it back up to 50 basis points would really push us into a hard recession where we're, no one wants to be. No politician, no Fed person wants to be there. And that's really what we're doing. So I think they're gonna go a couple of more 25 basis points and pause mm -hmm. if they get, you know, okay jobs numbers and okay CPI or P, you know, whatever their preferred thing is. Uh, right. PM, or, yeah. PC, all that stuff. PC, I mean, they're, there you yeah, go. They're watching, so many they're watching all of it, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and you don't think that we're going to see a sort of classic recession though, Kim? No, I don't. And we haven't since the introduction of a couple of things. One is ERP, the fancy uh, accounting systems that we're now able to really understand where the products are in our company and where even work in progress is, right? Mm. We, we can get really discrete data there. But also, probably more importantly, our CRM systems, where companies know what the demand is. So you put both of those together, and I don't think we have the traditional, oops, we made too much product, now what do we do, where a whole bunch of companies are doing that, and we get that classic recession. That really hasn't occurred since both of those um, technologies have been largely put in practice. Oh, so I mean, that's interesting. So you think that it's just almost, uh, well, I don't want to say impossible, but that there is a, um, you know, a, a, a real safety net there that uh, companies can see what's needed of them or what's not needed. And uh, they know what to order. They know, you know, what to be spending money on and, and uh, who they need to be working and all of those sorts of things because of, of technology. Exactly. And mm -hmm. where did we see this? I will tell you. In 2017, when the Trump administration started the um, 
war on China, right, the trade war, mm -hmm. everybody was forecasting a, a recession and it never occurred. And that was something that got me thinking. But even before that, the, the last time we had a big recession was from a financial crisis of housing. No doubt that would cause it. So I think recessions are now largely going to be caused by you know, some sort of bubble popping or some kind of credit or monetary issue. And, you know, so far, uh, looking backwards, I think we could say that's right. But those classic, hmm. we just made too much, doesn't seem like that happens. And, and I mean, you're a good person to be speaking on that too, Kim, because I remember you're a, you're a software engineer is your background uh, before right. you got into the investment business. Um, so I wonder when you're thinking about companies in that space, are there any companies that you see, uh, you know, real potential in to be helping through this period when it comes to the technology side of things? Or would these be, you know, re relationships that are already, uh, you know, well in place? They're, they're pretty much well in place. I will say that Salesforce, and we don't mm -hmm. own this, let me make this perfectly clear, but Salesforce is a company that really has done the product right. Any salesperson that I talk to that uses it completely comes to depend on it for their workday, and they actually enjoy it, which that's a tough thing for a salesperson. They're not known for loving, you know, sitting behind a computer or doing computer stuff. So I think that CRM is likely get grabbing market share from other vendors. And I would be wary of this because it's always tough to figure out when the market really is saturated with a product. So that's kind of my, my little asterisk next to CRM. I like them. I don't know, really understand how far they're in, entrenched into the world of, um, and, and I mean that by like the entire world. Mm -hmm. But so I don't know when, when that uh, growth stops, but it doesn't look like this was the quarter for that to stop. But no. it's a great company. Yeah.